Hi there guys. I thought I'd do a video today field dressing a pheasant. And although I've covered the subject before in a previous video, that video really explored dressing the whole bird. But I did get asked a number of questions on how to debreast the bird in an easy way. And there's a lot of easy ways of debreasting birds, but today we're going to explore one of those methods. I've got a lovely male pheasant here. And this isn't one I shot because they're out of season. It's actually one I hit in the Jeep coming back from work. And I wasn't going to leave it there for the next guy, as, as the rule of thumb goes, because to be honest with you, no one really picks them up anymore. Well, very few people do anyway, and uh, I thought I'd take it home and have it for dinner. On the walk up here, I strapped a few plants to the side of my pack. I've got some apple mint, which is great for scenting the hands after you've prepped game, and also some hedge woundwort, which is in the same family, the mint family, but it's actually a very powerful antiseptic and anti-inflammatory, so it's very good for, for cleaning the hands alongside some water. I also do have some burdock leaf as well, which is great for keeping things off the ground. Once you've got the meat off the bird, you don't want to just put it on dirt, for example. First of all, I like to inspect the quality of the game. This one's been hanging for about a day, and I generally don't hang birds after I've shot them. I dress them straight away in the field and let Mother Nature take care of the remains, because obviously they don't go to waste. But if we look at this one here, rigor mortis has worn off now, and it's loosened right up. You can see the wings are intact, they're not broken, they're absolutely fine. If we inspect the chest plate there, or breast plate, you can see it's completely intact with no damage. Obviously this was roadkill that I hit, so I kind of got to see the impacts, but if you didn't, sometimes it is worth inspecting them, because they can be completely mashed inside. And that is something you need to bear in mind before you dress them. If we just look at the legs there, you can see some skin's been torn off the leg, where it's obviously hit the floor after the point of impact. But overall it looks like it's in good condition. I've got my large burdock leaves on standby here, simply because it's very hot at this time of year and the flies are everywhere around here. And as soon as I've got the meat I want off the bird, I'm going to wrap them up for safekeeping to make sure the flies don't get to them. But you can always use the guts to distract them. I've also laid some bark down just to keep things a bit sturdy on foot. You can see if we lay the pheasant out here, you can see the damage to that leg there. It does feel a tiny bit broken. Got some concerns about that using this method, but we'll see how we go. You basically want to stand on the wing and tuck your feet right up, just like that. So if you can see there, I'm just keeping my back nice and straight, just pulling up with my legs like this. You know, not, not like that. You know, just using the power of your lower back, really, just to pull. Just start to pull. So don't pull like this. Lean the legs forward a little bit. Sort of start pulling vertically. And it should all come out just like that. We'll put that to one side. Gizzard heart and liver often get left behind. We just need to grab those there. And there are parts of those we can eat as we explored in the other video. And we've got all the neck there. You can just pull the head. And it should all just come out, just like that. So you've got the head just there, and the neck. Again, you can eat the neck as well, as we explored in the other video. So we can just pull the skin off, and you'll see the crop just there, all the seed in. And you just want to take the crop and free it up. And obviously throw that to one side. So now we're sort of left with a heart shape. You've got the breast there, and it's completely hollow with no guts. And you've got the wings just there as well. So obviously we want to remove the wings. The flies are moving in pretty fast, so you generally have to work quite quickly on these hot, humid days in the summer when you're dressing game. It can be a bit annoying unless you sort of burn a bracket fungi and have a smoky fire going to fend them off. But you can spend some time jointing the wings off. I generally just take my knife and a baton just take straight through the wing like that. And I'll do the other one as well. You can just stretch them out and tuck in. Again, there is a bit of meat on the wing as we explored in the other video. You can use that if you wish. And you've got some feathers there as well to cover things up with if you need to. So we should just be left with the breast now. There will be a few feathers on there and a little bit of skin. And a bit of fat as well that you can keep. You can just literally tidy that up. And don't worry too much about all the feathers. 
This can be cleaned up in a river very quickly, although it is good to keep pheasant dry once you've taken the skin off. Um, so yeah, this can be wrapped up now and popped away. Now the flies can't get to it. I've covered the remainder with the feathers and the wing just because the flies have a bit of a hard time getting through it. But there's plenty of other things we could have used off that pheasant as we explored in the other video. Here we've got the back end with the two big back legs on and um, sometimes the back end is described as not being worth it and not having enough meat on. Well, it is true that there are some very thick tendons in the legs and pheasants can run very fast and they're very strong, but it is worth it and there is plenty of meat on there worth taking. can see there, if we peel all this skin back and try and ignore the deer in the background calling out, there's a huge amount of meat just there, a really nice bit of meat. It's often just thrown aside and wasted. And um, yeah, it's a perfect bit of meat. I'm going to take that home as well. So I've stripped the bird down and taken what I can. But obviously my hands are a bit dirty and I want to do a bit of cleaning now. So I'm going to take the edibles that I picked earlier, which was a bit of apple mint and uh, some hedge wound wart. And we can talk about these herbs in, in later videos. But I'm just going to separate them out because this is the hedge wound wart, the one that looks a, a little bit like a stinging nettle, just like this. And the apple mint is mainly just to make them smell good afterwards. I'm going to take the leaves off, and this is the one that's an antiseptic, an anti-inflammatory. And we've got the leaves just here. You can crush those leaves up. It really has a strong smell. Take a bit of water. Just put it in the hand there, and properly bottle that. Keep adding little bits of water like that and it should just start to be quite abrasive but very good for cleaning the hands. You just want to make sure you bruise those leaves up a bit first. An even more efficient way of doing it is a pestle and mortar. You can make a very good solution like that and even simmer them slightly on a fire and really get a good solution together and you can use that as a mouthwash as well. But your hands will not smell of pheasant or game after you do this, trust me. I'll smell horrible. <laughs> and that should be them nice and clean, mildly disinfected. You can take the mint, don't worry about taking the leaves off, you can leave the stems on. Same deal. Clean yourself up. And obviously, like you know, good to move your fingers while you do it, open up those cracks and crevices and any cuts you might have and all that. So fortunately I don't have any cuts, but they smell lovely, they smell just like mint. You know, and they're nice and clean, you can continue working and uh, you know your hands will just dry up quite naturally. So I hope that video helped out when it comes to debreasting. As I say, it's a great method if you want to debreast pheasant and various other wild fowl, though some of the smaller birds tend to rupture a little if you try that. But you know, if you are going to use the whole bird, I'd probably advise checking out the other video, which is a lot simpler if you're out in the field. You want to keep the internals you want in the bird and stick roast it and just keep things a little bit neater. 
But thanks again for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed the vid and I'll hopefully see you in the next one.